So I've got some killer questions for you coming up. <laughs> Let's get it. I got some big ones. I don't remember how I came up with this goal, but my goal of revenue next year, and this is kind of like a 10x goal as well. I feel like it could be achievable if I set all my cards right. Like if everything is right, I, I could, I think. Um, but I want to hit a goal of 570K in revenue by the end of next year. What would it take for me to get to that point? So that's a good question. Um, 570K because you're going to do about 200K this year, right? Correct. Um, I think it's very doable. I think it's achievable. Um, what would it take? You're definitely going to need some type of office backend. That's a, that's a must. Um, you're going to need about eight. Wait. Okay. Before I start throwing these numbers out, are you doing simple services or are you doing complex sod jobs, tree installation, edging installation, flower bed revamps? No. Simple are you, services. Are you doing plant installations? No. All right. I like it. I like it, man. This is good. All right. So you're going to need about seven to eight field members in the peak seasons. Okay. Okay. Um, you're going to need about five crew members come winter time. I, I feel, I feel pretty confident that if you spent like $15,000 in the springtime, one five on EDDM at the right time in the new neighborhoods, and you had your, like, I would over hire in the spring. Like you had one guy, you need to have five in the spring on March 1st to March 15th. You need five. And when they're not mowing, they're going to every single door and putting flyer on the doorstep. And as the work comes in, you're answering most maybe of the calls, doing training, stuff like that. As the calls come in, you start to keep them. Okay, guys, instead of doing flyers, you're going to shift over to actually mowing and making money. But like for a whole month, month and a half, that's probably, I think that's how we built our first location was through flyers. And if it's done at the right time, it's, I, it will work. It will work. Um, obviously I, I've, I'm not, I haven't had huge success with Google ads or Facebook ads, stuff like that. I mean, that's an avenue you can try, but I know what works in our market. Obviously you're right down the street that at the right time, about a week before the grass comes out of dormancy you're golden. Um, and I would do it for like 10 straight weeks, 10 weeks, every Saturday, I'd be working 12 hour days, Monday through Friday and 12 on Saturday, like just grinding. And, 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 and you have to, you have to leverage people, right? Like you're at right. this weird stage where it's like you and an employee, but you, you can't do it all. Like you have to have people to do it. So like, getting the people right. That That's why I'm a big advocate on like over hiring in March, because like, right. even if you don't have work, you're like, Oh, should I hire this dude? Yeah. Put them on flyer duty for the next two weeks. You'll get work to, to make them busy. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, I would say, I would say that's probably the biggest thing. And then the office side would be like a learning curve, but you can just learn that like, as it comes, I feel. Right. Right. So you're saying 10 weeks of marketing, uh, next spring. Yeah. So, so two and a half months. You're, you're saying start early in, because I remember I spoke to you before, but start early uh, in February. So end of February, go ahead and start put it, pushing out, uh, pouring a little bit of marketing money starting then, right? Yep. I would do probably February 22nd, like one week before March. That's about when the grass comes out of dormancy. And, and we'll have a little bit of warmer days, but you're going to start about like a week, seven to 10 days before. And I wouldn't stop until basically April 30th. Like March and April is the gold rush. It is the gold rush. And that is when all the opportunity is. That's when I'd recommend pumping all of your marketing dollars in that window. And right. most people come like mid-April, they're like, dude, cut our Google ads off. And you should be like, no, I want them all. And like keep pumping, right. keep pushing flyers. Exactly. Out. Yeah. So- yeah. I agree with that. So pump a ton of money in those first two and a half months. Now, what about May and June? Because you could still get quite a few customers in that period of time. I would uh, spend all my money in March and April. Yeah. 
That's what I so would. So what if you still what if you still had money left over? What if you still have cash that you can use? Then you didn't do it properly, right? And spend all the money in March and April. Okay. So I you're can... you're saying literally to spend every dime. Every as much as you have. As much as you have. I can show you the numbers. It's there's a significant drop off in May. A significant drop off. And you pumping out more marketing dollars, I promise you would get more return for your dollar in March and April than in May or June. So what if you start getting money from these new customers, right? Like you still spent so much money in that period, but you, uh -huh. you're getting a lot of cash coming in too. So, I mean, of course you're going to have cash in May and June to spend. Why not just spend that in that time period too? Because at that point, you're going to be shifting over to structure and you're going to be buying more trucks. You're going to be buying more equipment. You're going to be buying mowers and things like that. And so that's where a lot of your uh, money will have to go is to okay. the equipment and, and supporting of actually fulfilling these orders because you're going to go like that and it's going to get right. It's, 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 it's like, crazy. oh, snap, we need to get like, like I, I know when we did it, we got a truck. We had to get the signage and the ramp on it and everything. And then literally like 60 days later, it was like, we need another truck. So we went out and bought another one. And you're talking 15 K ish each truck with the signage and the equipment and stuff like that. So that's 30 K right there. So now you were saying seven to eight team members initially, but then you said five in the spring. So you're saying higher for seven to eight, but expect to have five or no, 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 no. The five would be the winter. Winter, not okay. yeah, not spring. Um, I did get the winter part. To to do five hundred and seventy k in the summer months, you will need roughly seven to eight. Just call it eight because you want that guy. You know, somebody's going to be sick. Somebody's going to be on vacation. Somebody's going to be hurt. Um, call it eight. You're going to need eight team members for sure in the summer. Okay. But like so in the spring, shoot for five. But like obviously over higher. But you're you're you should probably be around five in that period. Yeah, I think five would be like a safe a safe area. I mean, you got what two trucks now? Yeah. So you already know off the bat, one thousand percent to get max capacity on the on the team member part, you need four people. No questions, if ands or but. If you're like, ah, oh, should I hire this guy? If you don't, you need four people. You need two butts in each in those seats. Mm -hmm. at a minimum right and then it'd be nice to have somebody maybe like on call or on the back end and what you can do too is like you can put somebody on flyer duty for three weeks and you know at the end of those three weeks you're probably gonna be buying another truck because it's gonna be so much workload coming in i'm telling you if you do it right and you do the edm and you do the flyers the door hangers it's it's you're gonna be needing a truck if somebody's on full-time flyer duty you know and you can do two of them right you don't need another truck and I mean, you know how team members are sometimes like they don't stick around, especially in growth mode. Like there's a lot of turnover. So I wouldn't even be stressing about like, oh man, like I only have four seats available, but I got a fifth and sixth guy I'm hiring, put them on flyer duty for the next two months. Like, or you could rotate them out too to kind of switch things up, but. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. So would you recommend possibly hiring someone separately for door hangers too? Like, let's say we get so busy. Would you say that could be something that I could do? Or are you saying just hire team members and just, if there's not enough work, just simply use them as door hanger? I would do both. You can do both. Yeah. I, I don't think either way is, is incorrect. I think, I think you can do both. So where do you figure the seven to eight team members though in the summer? What, what, where do you figure that out? Um, and I can just base this off of our, model this year. So this year we're going to do um, probably like 575 around that. So we went down a little bit, but we also cut out like sod, tree trimming, plant installation. Like we cut out a lot of services. So we're more just recurring. But the reason I say like, like you don't actually need eight people, but you do. And here's why somebody's sick. Somebody's calling off. Somebody doesn't feel well. Somebody's mother's coming into town. Somebody's on vacation. Um, somebody's getting a new job. Like there's just yeah. a revolving door and you want to make sure that you're not the one out there every day pushing the mower. Like at 570K, you need to be like selling jobs, selling services. Like spring rush and summer, like three days a week, you're out there like doing estimates, 
majority of the day. And then you're out in the field for maybe two days, you know, otherwise, if you don't, you're going to only have like five guys and then you're going to be so swamped, dude, having to pick up slack out in the field and stuff like that. But yeah, just having those options is is a good thing. Plus we only work to like, I'm talking when it's 105 degrees out, you know how it is. We don't work at yeah. like two, three, four o'clock in the afternoon. We just don't. So exactly. we got to yeah. get everything done in like six and a half, maybe seven hours. Otherwise it's too hot. And so it's kind of weird. It's it's almost like the winter time, like when hours get scrunched in the summer, when it's really hot, hours get scrunched because there's only a, from 6 a.m. to 1 30. That's it. After two o'clock, right. dude, it's miserable. Exactly. So, yeah. So there's a limited amount of time. But so that would mean that you would need to over hire to kind of cover that. Right. Absolutely. You need to have more more team during that period. So that makes sense. Yeah. OK. I feel confident now. <laughs> it's a good game plan. I feel like I, 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 I think I can achieve that. I mean, that's two more trucks. Yeah, and that that stuff's all easy, right? You know how to go out and buy a truck. You know how to put signs on it. You know how to put a ramp on it. That's easy. You already know how to hire people. Now you're going to get a lot better at it. Trust me, this mm-hmm. year, this upcoming year, because you're going to do it more, and you're going to say, okay, what a good one is, and what a not good one is. Um, I think you're really good at holding the culture, so. That'll be a benefit for you. I think your biggest, just because I I know a lot about you and your business, I think your biggest hurdle would honestly be answering all the calls. Mm. And, you know, I know we've talked about like you doing the call center thing. And if that works out well and you're able to handle that, I don't see any reason why you can't hit 570. Because I think that's like the only hurdle. Outside of that, it's just putting the reps in and, pumping out enough money in springtime at the right time. The only thing I'm worried about with that, with the call center is just the sales. Maybe your close ratio won't be so high because of it, but it'd be better to take in the calls than to not be able to take them in. I guess. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just like what I think Mike said this. He's like, he's like, I'd rather have 10 businesses that do 80% well and like quality and like stuff than like one business that does like it a hundred percent perfectly, you know? Right, right, just, right. And it's, you know, and it's a lot for me to try to switch to that too, right now, trying to hire an office person now, trying to train them, you know, you run the risk of them leaving and then you're like, Oh crap, you know, and you're in the middle of the spring. Like, what, what do I do? This is a mess. Yeah. You know? So yeah, it probably makes sense just for this year to stick to, you know, the, the call service and then, once I can get through the spring rush, maybe I could then look into getting my own office yeah. person. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you could, you could probably take calls, but you're not going to be able to take all of them. Hey guys, wanted to take a quick second here. So I don't ask or promote anything on this channel or sell anything directly to you guys. I provide this value completely free to you and hopefully it helps grow and achieve greater success in your business. But what I wanted to ask uh, from you is if you could click that subscribe button and share this video with someone, an entrepreneur in the lawn care industry that you feel could benefit from this content. More importantly, it may change someone's future. We'll see you guys here in a bit. It's going to be a lot, a lot. Oh, yeah. So I actually thought about that too. So maybe if I'm like full time at a desk, maybe they could transfer calls over to me. I wonder if they could do that. I should ask them. Um, Probably, probably. Or you can have your phone ring first. And then if it doesn't answer in like two rings and it just gets sent to them. Um, oh, yeah. What, what, you, what you also have to account for is like, Dude, you're going to be so busy training the new team members because like, I'm just telling you, stuff's going to go wrong. People are going to leave. I know you've got like a solid yeah. team member now. It'd be great if he's there to train in this in summer and stuff, but like mm. it's, it's normal. There's, there's turnover. Just expect like, you know, that you're going to have to probably go out and train, especially at like two from the grind from 200 to 500. Like I, I was still even out in the field a lot, you know? just training and going through the reps with people until you really get like a solid couple of guys where you can have a couple trainers, you know, and stuff. But yeah. And that's, that's what my current employee 
uh, his role is going to be is to get the employee into more mastery is going to yeah. be his role. So I'll, I'll do the quick, I'll do like the first day onboarding kind of just going over, you know, what we're about um, just a quick, basic, quick rundown and then I'll throw them off to Gabe. Um, yeah. And he's, I've trained him on how to train as well. We've gone over um, what I expect and he, he's almost like me. He's at, he's almost at my level. He's about 90% of me, 95%, I would say. That's good. So I, he could, he, and he's, he's trained before he's trained another employee of mine. Um, and he's also been a manager for another place before too. So I think he's, he, he's able to, I guess we'll just see from how it goes from there, but he does plan on staying. So yeah, if, I'll definitely want to, I'll definitely try to pass that on to him just so I can really focus on the sales. Cause I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah. During that period of time. If you're able to do that, that, that would be legit. Like you could, you would be able to answer a lot more calls. Like you're going to be on the phone all day, all day. Yeah. And you're going to be having calls that are coming in while you're on the phone. Like that's just to do that type of volume is going to be crazy. But yeah. And that's, it, that's what I want. That's why I want him to be in that position is because I want to focus on calls and sales. Yeah. It'll probably be a little easier. Like when we did that, we were still doing sod. <clears throat> we were still doing tree trimming and edging revamps and bed flower bed stuff. <clears throat> so it was really crazy for us. <clears throat> oh yeah. But it might be a little bit simpler because you are in simple services. It's a lot more easier of like, oh yeah, we don't do that. And then you reference them out to something else. And then if it is a customer that does what you guys do, you can be like, okay, let me serve them well and make them a customer. Yeah, absolutely. And everything that we do can be trained, I think, within a week, maybe two weeks. Yeah. At the most. Yeah. So give it a good, a good model. Definitely Gabe can take care of that um, during the period. So, it'll yeah, it'll free up my time to do what really matters, which is the sales.